Hey guys, Cody here, and today I want to talk to you about some of the biggest challenges that I face as an artist. Now these are just kind of personal uh, things that I've dealt with, but I'm pretty sure that I've seen other people post about them as well. And if I start mentioning them, if you're like a creative type, you'll probably understand exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and just things that I've dealt with, but also kind of how to, how to handle those things. So let's just jump into it. Uh, the first one is obscurity. So obviously when you're starting out, you're obscure. Nobody knows who you are. And when I first started out, I don't know why, in my head, I was just like, oh man, I'm gonna start painting and everybody's just gonna start buying my paintings and I'm gonna get sold out and you know, I'm gonna start getting offers from galleries and museums and I was like, and in my head, I was like, man, all this stuff is just gonna happen like almost overnight, right? As soon as I started painting, I just, I don't know why, I just thought that like I was gonna make it big, I was gonna be the next big thing. and reality set in and nobody cared. Well, they did, right? People on Facebook, my friends and families, they cared, but only so much, right? So, uh, you know, when you're, obviously when you're starting out, uh, nobody knows who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a writer or a painter, or artist, sculptor, um, does not matter, right? So you, you're obscure. So, and this is the biggest thing that a lot of people deal with is obscurity. So like, even if you've been doing it for a while, you still, you could paint for a thousand years and still never be known, right? Well, not a thousand years, it's, that's a long time, but you get what I'm saying, right? So even if you've been around, you could still be obscure. So how do you break that? Well, obviously obscurity comes from no one knowing who you are. So you have to basically get your stuff out there. Um, you do have to promote yourself. Like you can't just make the product and expect people to buy it. I know a lot of people who are artists don't like to promote themselves because they say I'm not a salesman or I don't have a marketing background or blah, blah, blah. It really doesn't matter. You're going to have to learn something. You have to do something um, to to get yourself out there. So obscurity, it doesn't, I've, you know, when I was writing, nobody bought my books because they didn't even know that I was writing, right? They didn't know who I was. And I think Stephen King talked about this with writers is that the biggest thing is that you know, is it, isn't people, you know, stealing their content. It's people not even knowing they exist because someone, that's what it was. They were worried about people stealing their, their books or, you know, downloading them and then distributing them for free. And he's like, well, one, it's free promotion. So darn. And two, you know, he said that like most artists will deal more with obscurity than they will people liking it so much that they steal it. Right. So that's, that's a reality. Um, so if you want to be, if you want to be known as an artist, you have to break that obscurity. So that's what a lot of people dealt with that I had to learn to find a way to promote myself that worked for me and just kind of do that to, to get noticed, right? So that's one. Second one is, uh, I guess two, uh, is saturation. So it's kind of the opposite, right? Well, it's not, it is and it's not, but it's related. So we deal with the obscurity um, as individuals where we nobody knows who we are but on top of that the markets are saturated so it doesn't really matter what type of art you make or whatever creative thing you do it doesn't really matter because every uh, let's say niche is saturated these days like there's there's almost no one that does anything a hundred percent unique that stands out above the rest so if you're just getting into it or if you've been doing it for a while and not seeing the results you want it's probably one that you're still obscure because you haven't done enough to promote yourself and I'm, a lot of people don't want to promote but that, that's an unfortunate part of what you do and actually I find that it's enjoyable if you like the promotional method that you choose and really anything can work if you if you push at it long enough um, but anyway the market is saturated no matter what you do so kind of you have to you have to accept that you have to accept that you, the thing that you do is probably not super unique or you know where it's gonna make you just take off and you're gonna be an overnight sensation sensation because you know you that thing is so unique that people have never seen it before and they just share it with the world probably not gonna happen just expect not to be viral okay so that keeping that in mind every market is saturated doesn't matter what you do so to to do that like to to beat that um uh, you have to find a way to cu to cut above everyone else so just because the ma the market is saturated and i'll give you a good example all right kindle publishing all right 
I don't know about you, but I've written books on Amazon and self-published, okay? I've also seen other books that were self-published on Amazon that were complete garbage. And it's because they, because anyone can do it now, there's a lack of quality because a lot of people just want to rush the product out. They don't care about the quality. So really there's two, there's two things that will set you apart for becoming, to, to break past the saturation point of the market. Um, first is the amount of work that you put in. So you have to put in the effort. If you put in the effort to, to break past that, um, then eventually you'll be rewarded. It may take some time because there's a lot of competition out there. And it's not that you and I are competing as artists, but we are. I mean, if we want sales, if we want recognition, if we want to get into galleries, museums, it doesn't matter what your end goal is. You're, you're competing with dozens or hundreds or thousands of other people in your niche. So it doesn't matter. To break past the saturation, one, you gotta put in the work. Two, you gotta, you gotta stop being obscure. You have to promote yourself. You just have to. And you have to find that one thing. So you, and you can't just make a good product and expect people to, to just buy it up. It just does not work that way. I wish it did, but you have to do some kind of promotion. Um, very rarely do products just jump, uh, explode because of the quality. Yes, you can have a great quality and people will, will expand that, but you also have to mark yourself. Third is criticism, all right? Being on YouTube, YouTube is a huge example of criticism. If you ever want to read negative comments, go to, go to YouTube or Reddit. Um, but honestly, like because pretty much everybody says whatever's on their mind these days, there's less tact or decorum, I feel like. Um, because of that, people just say whatever they want, right? And they, there's, there's almost no filters these days. And uh, I've gotten it myself, being an artist. Just on these videos, I've had people say, oh, this is garbage, I, you know, I, I can't believe you call this art, and you know, anybody can do this, and you know, it looks like my kid did that. Look, I get it, I, I really do. And I would agree to some extent that that's, some of that's probably true. I mean, this, you, you, your kids probably could have done that, but that, that's why I'm not selling it, because it's, I'm not proud of it, right? I, I like it as a background, um, but I, I'm just not happy with it, so I'm not gonna sell it. But anyway, coming back to criticism, just don't let it bog you down. Who cares what some random person on the internet thinks? You know, but I've even had family and friends that they just don't get the abstract art thing. I don't, I don't hold that against them. Like, I just don't care. Uh, my grandmother, who I love my grandma, she's like, oh, it looks like a kid did it. That's my grandmother, dude. Oh well, oh well. I just, I don't hold that against her. I don't, whatever, dude. I just don't care. So just let it slide. Look, people, maybe maybe there's some truth to what they say. I had someone say, hey, you know, I get it, but why would someone pay so much money for this? That's a valid point. I mean, it, it's really dependent on the market. If, if the supply and demand match i mean then that's all there is it doesn't matter if you wouldn't find you wouldn't buy it. i've had people buy hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of art from me that's on them right i don't make that decision i just put it out to market and the market decides so just shelf the criticism and if people give you great feedback great just just you know take it all with a grain of salt good and bad i mean you can listen but ultimately you're the artist uh next is insecurity this will probably never go away. Um, even, I, I'm coming back to Stephen King because I, I admire him. I don't like all of his stories, but I admire him as just his work ethic. Um, you know, there was an interview with him and George R.R. R. Martin, the guy that does the Game of Thrones series. And uh, George R.R. Martin was like, man, how do you write so many books? And Stephen King's like, I just type, <laughs> and I type every day. And, and really that's it. Um, coming back to insecurity you know a lot of times it stops us because we think our work isn't good enough or we think that uh you know that nobody would buy it or whatever right and the problem is is like you'll probably always deal with insecurity that's why i brought up stephen king because i just I, I i admire his work ethic but the reason i brought him up is because he uh he talked about how he feels like a fraud he feels like that someday everyone's gonna wake up and just realize that they've been buying his books for no reason right that they were all garbage or what is what what right does he have to write them this is one of the this is probably the best selling best most selling artist or author in the u.s in maybe in the world single author not someone who is like you know patterson and has people write for him 
I won't get into that. But anyway, so coming back to that, he t he talks about that. And I've heard of musicians talking about that, how like before they go on stage, they feel like a fraud, and yet they're performing in front of thousands of people. So look, I don't think that the insecurity ever goes away. I've heard of motivational speakers um, talk about that same thing. Like they, they feel like, how dare I go in front of these people and tell them how to better their lives? Look, you just do it, right? Insecurity will probably never go away, but you just you just work past it. And and the only thing I can say to that is, you know your quality. So I would say don't put bad quality stuff out. But if you're not a hundred percent about it, then start low, you know, or start pricing low. But we'll, we'll I'll talk about charging in a second. But ultimately, for insecurity, just do it anyway. Just keep doing it, and get in get yourself to the point where the work that you do is routine so that when you come to it you you have the routine of doing it anyway regardless of how you feel you see the habit is more important um and more yeah the, the developing a habit is more important than how you feel so if you can develop the habit to to just work through it anyway despite how you feel maybe you don't feel like painting today maybe you don't feel like writing or drawing or whatever it is but you need to because you need to keep the habit and if you build the habit so that the habit compels you to do it regardless of how you feel, then you're going to only get better and you're going to, you know, you're going to break the obscurity, the saturation, all that stuff. Okay, so just fight through it. You just got to fight through it. Uh, next is charging for money. Man, this is a huge one. Um, a lot of artists I know, they, they, they just don't charge at all. They just give all their work away or... You know, they charge very, very little, like not even enough to cover their costs. I did this for, for quite a while. And uh, I realized that if you don't respect your art enough to charge a certain amount for it, then how will anyone else respect it, right? If you just give all your work away for free, people don't really value things that they get for free. I mean, that's it's been proven over and over again. And I'm not saying that they don't value it at all or that some people won't respect it to a high degree. But think about it. The things that you get for free, you just don't value as much as the things that you had to pay for yourself because you had to work for that in some fashion to earn that. And then you, but even if you didn't earn it and you were given the money, you still had to part with that money to get that thing, right? So I would say don't undercharge. You know, this goes back to insecurity. A lot of people who are insecure will charge low prices. Don't, because I'm going to tell you that um, when I sold more art, it compelled me to like when I sold more art for more money as opposed to just giving it away or giving it like for 20 bucks, it made me excited because I did that. Like I was able to accomplish that and it made me want to paint more. But when I just give it away or sell it real cheap, I feel almost like crummy, right? Because I feel like that person's getting my art. That's cool. It's going to a new home. I like that. But but is that person really going to value it? Do they really care or they just wanted a good deal? I'm not saying you can't put discounts on it. I'm not saying you can't give the artwork away for free for certain reasons. Um, but honestly, like if you don't value it, then no one else will. So you have to charge a fair rate. I'm not saying you have to go sky high, but start somewhere. And then as you build notoriety or as you sell a lot of pieces or as you get into galleries or do shows, whatever, you start to build that up in your resume or your curriculum vitae, I think it's called. Um, I, don't, I don't have one, but I probably, maybe I should. I don't, I don't know. I don't do everything right. But point is, you can use that to, to charge more, right? And then you'll value even more. Lastly is finding your style. You need to find the style that works for you, okay? So finding your style is is really important and kind of a big challenge, or at least it was for me, um, because your style is kind of like what defines you, right? And how people will recognize the work that you do. And for me, it took almost two years to really define or understand what my style was. And it, it comes down to scraped abstract paintings. Um, and it's because I would see a lot of other people online doing this style or that style or this type of thing. And, and I would think, oh, that's really cool. And I would try that for a while. And, and then I'd get frustrated or not like that style. Um, and then I would see another one and I'd chase that. Or, you know, I would just like to experiment a lot. And, 
And I think that's okay. I think it's okay to try different things every now and then. But at the same time, like, if you, you know, you've probably heard Jack of all trades, master of none. That's so true. So as an artist, you really have to kind of define what is your style. And if you don't know what that is, if you don't know, you know, what your style is, then it's going to make it harder for you as the artist because you're going to keep trying all these different things and you're not going to be really mastering one. But also for your audience because the number one thing that I see like galleries say or like people who sell a lot of art or people who teach a lot of art, they almost all come back to the same thing that you should have one core style. And if you think about all of the famous people that we know of for art, pretty much any any style or um, any, yeah, any method, um, it came down to one core distinct style that we remember them for. So using Pollock as an example, we remember his drip paintings, even though he has other paintings that aren't drip paintings, but, but when we think of him, we think of those paintings because that was such a, a core thing. Um, so really that's it. So with these different challenges, um, it really comes down to just just doing it over and over again and kind of working through these different things. Um, but those are just some of the common things that I've dealt with. Um, if you have any other ones, please leave them in the comment section. But uh, if you like this video, just you know, be sure to uh, share it. And there's a blog post version somewhere in the link, uh, like in the description. And uh, I'll catch you guys in another video. Take care.